All right, if you're using Google Sheets, and let's just say you have a column of numbers and you want to calculate the average, we're going to go over how to do that, but we're also going to talk about several different situations where it might not work. And we'll discuss alternative methods to get you to your average so that we can work with any type of data. All right, so the first example here, I'll delete it right now and I'll retype it. It's just simply using the average function. So we'll just start typing average and Google Sheets will start to autofill this list with functions that it's guessing that you want to use. So the second one is average. We'll left click on that. And the only input that the average function needs is just the cells that you want to average. It's guessing right here, D5 to D12, and that's going to be right. So we can left click on that and it's even telling us the answer already. All right, so that's the mathematical average of these cells. But I'm guessing you came to this video because you're not able to calculate the average. All right, you're having some issues. We're going to talk about five different ways to fix them. Let's unhide some of this data here. Rehide these cells. Those will come into play later. And our second example is taking the average of a list that isn't all number values. Okay, so it's kind of obvious that this is a number and this one isn't. But sometimes it's not so clear, like you may have here uh, 12, okay? And an easy way to check this is just to use the isNumber function. We'll type that in and we will point it to E5. And that's saying true, that's a number. But if you drag this down to the bottom of the range that you're trying to sum, you'll see that E6 and E10 are not numbers. All right, so we're going to delete that little test and this is kind of an interesting one because 3.5 could still be the right answer. All right, so I'm going to unhide column F and I've kind of put a manual formula in here to show you what the average function is doing. What it's doing is it's taking only the number values for the numerator, all right? So it's summing everything that's in a rectangle and a dotted line here, and then it's dividing them by the count of them. So it's the summation of the two, the five, et cetera, divided by one, two, three, four, five, six. If that's what you wanted the average function to do, then your answer is right. You don't have to change anything. But if you wanted these to be treated like zeros, especially if we change this back to no stock, there's a function for this. So we will unhide a row here. And it's a different function called average A. And what average A does is that it will add up all of the numerical values and just use a zero for the text values. So the numerator is still the same here, but the denominator is going to have two more numbers in it. So the result is going to be lower, which it is, and it's 2.63. All right, so we'll look at what the average A function is doing if we do it manually, is we're still summing just the numbers, but the denominator is a count of the number of numerical values and text values in the range. All right, so it stands to reason that the result would be a little bit smaller. All right, our next issue that we can deal with is how the average and the average A functions, for that matter, deal with hidden rows. So let's say this row with $665 in uh, a count of six is going to be hidden. So I pick this because it's on the outer bounds of this range of data, right? The 665 is making the average larger, and so is the six as well. But if we right click and hide this, It doesn't change these calculations. And maybe that's what you want, and that's fine. If so, obviously you don't need to change anything. But there is a function available that can exclude hidden rows. So we'll left click uh, over in between the 15 and the 16 to unhide row 16, where I have a function called subtotal. So I could put it in both columns. Let's do that. And you'll see this is ignoring the hidden row. So it's substantially lower than these two values because that hidden row had 600 and something in it. All right, so we'll do double click in here and it's the subtotal function. And then the subtotal function takes a function code. So there are several different things the subtotal function can do. And one of them is average. And the code 101 ignores hidden values. All right, we'll take a quick look at that. We'll left click on learn more. These are the available function codes. One is average, but if you add a one zero before it, it will skip hidden values. 
All right, so we'll escape out of that and we'll go on to our next example. And this would be finding the average of a range of values that have errors in it. Okay, so if you just use the average function, we'll select just the values there, I'll hit enter, and it returns an error because it's saying, look, I can't calculate the average because these aren't all numbers. It doesn't know what you want to do with the error, so it just says there's a problem here. And maybe that's okay, you need to be careful changing this function because Probably the best course of action is to fix the errors, but if you know the errors are there and you still want to move on and make the calculation, I'm going to go up to the toolbar, left click on undo, and we'll talk about what's going on here. All right, so I'll double click in this cell, and what we're doing here is we're using the filter function and the is number test. Okay, this is averaging all the values that make it through the filter function. So we've set up the filter to look at G5 through G12, and the test for the filter is if it's a number or not. All right, so $7.62 will make it through to the average function, but the pound value error will not. So it won't come into the average function, so it won't return an error. So that looks a little high to me. Let's unhide these rows, and this is why, because I have a large value in here, and the average function doesn't ignore hidden rows. So if I hold the control key and I left click on the values that it's averaging, we'll double check this by going down in the lower right hand corner. And there it is, the average is 921.41. All right, but if you use the filter function and the is number function together, you can still do it on the entire column. All right, so we'll go on to our next example. So in Google Sheets, you can use checkboxes. And what these are, if you look up in the formula box, is really just a way to represent a true or a false. If you want to average these, so if you want to see if more are checked than are unchecked, the average function won't return a value because it doesn't evaluate anything that's not a number, right? So we need to come down and use the average A function. And like we talked about earlier, average A will look at Boolean values, and if it's a true, it will evaluate it as a one, if it's a false, it'll evaluate it as a zero. So if we uncheck one of these, you can see the average gets a little bit lower. So if you're averaging true and falses, in this case it's check boxes, average A is definitely the way you want to do it. All right, and then we'll scroll down to a little bit more complicated of an example, but not too bad. If you have a list of values, but that list of value has subtotals in it, or in this case, kind of a sub averages. We'll go through what happens when you use the average function and then we'll talk about an alternative. Each one of these smaller groups of data has its own average being calculated. And that's working fine until you get down to averaging the entire list. And if you specify that whole range, it's also going to average the other average functions. All right, so you don't want to do that. We'll unhide this column, come back down. And a way to work around that is to go back to using the subtotal function and you have to replace all of the averages with it. So we'll do a subtotal 101 in each one of these cells where we're taking the average. And then if you again use the subtotal function for your average, it will ignore the results of all the other subtotal functions. All right, and if you wanna learn more about subtotal, this next video is going to show you how it makes the using the sum function easier as well. I'll see you in that next video. Thanks for watching.